Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's tutorial, we will talk about the GLTF format, which has become the standard for 3D content. It is supported by widely used software and 3D engines. And thanks to the ShapeDiver plugin, now you can create GLTFs via Grasshopper. Today we will talk about what GLTFs are, how you can create GLTFs via Grasshopper, and how and where you can use these files. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe if you haven't done so. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a GLTF? GLTF stands for Graphic Language Transmission Format or GL Transmission Format. It was created by the Kronos Group. And as I already said, it was created to load 3D scenes and models by engines and applications. It is already an ISO certified international standard, which means that experts agree that it is the best format to use when it comes to 3D content. But why you should care about GLTF? Well, because it is widely used by a lot of software, companies, engines, etc. So for example, here we have Blender, we have Cinema 4D, Maya, 3ds Max, Revit, Sketchfab. We have Adobe products. On the other hand, we have um, Meta, WordPress. Here we have Babylon, 3GS, Unity, and Real Engine. So basically, if you know how to create GLTFs, all of this market is open for you. For example, in Meta, since 2018, they support GLTF 2.0, which means that now users can create this kind of 3D posts by using GLTF format. Also, if you know Sketchfab, one of the most um, used 3D platforms, um, this one also supports GLTF. So as you can see, the potential is huge. So let's have a look at how you can create these GLTFs via Grasshopper. So for my example, I will use um, this tutorial. So this tutorial inspired me to create the model that I will show you. Um, it is basically a tree generator. This file, we will post it. We will add it uh, down in the description. It is a bit different to the one that is in the tutorial um, because we are trying to compress it and to to focus in the GLTF part and not in the Grasshopper uh, script part. So just bear that in mind. So here this model has um, some uh, parameters for the tree itself. So what is the width, the depth of the tree, the trunk height, tree, uh, the tree height, etc. So for example, here, if I change this uh, number of random points to 200, and we can see that we have now more branches. And the main um, components that we are using here are the proximity 3D component. This plugin that is called the shortest walk plugin. And we are using components that are just available in Rhino 7, which are the multi-pipe component and the sub D, the mesh from sub D component. So all of these components are very powerful here in Grasshopper. And now what if we could take this power into a GLTF so we could use it in all of these other environments that we saw, all of these other software, all of these other engines. Then is when we can use the um, ShapeDiver plugin. So if we go to the ShapeDiver plugin in the display section, we have here the GLTF, GLTF 2.0 display component, and we have also the GLTF 2.0 materials, which are the ones that we have already here. So with these components, we can convert any of our models into a GLTF. In the inputs here for the material section, we also have uh, the ShapeDiver import the ShapeDiver import bitmap component, which is able to bring through a URL or through a file an image inside our models so that we can get this kind of wood or any other material in our model. 
So here, as you can see, we have our tree. We transform the texture coordinates of our tree so that the, the, the texture looks smaller. And finally, we connect it into the GLTF. If we right click in this GLTF, we see here that we have the option to save this GLTF. So if we click on GLTF, save GLTF, then we can uh, save it wherever we want inside our um, computer. I will put the stream, save. And now if we check that file, have it here, test three. Then if I open this file, even the Windows viewer is able to read it. So now I'm gonna be completely outside of Grasshopper, completely outside of any Shape Diver plugin or anything like that. And our file will be able to stand by its own. So here in this single GLTF file, we have the three uh, geometry, but we also have embed in it all the um, texture. So here you can see that if we rotate the model, we can see how the light affects in this texture because we have all of the layers that are necessary to create a good texture. We have a normal map, we have a, the diffuse map, and also a roughness map. And that's how we can get a realistic um, result. So here we are in the 3D viewer of Windows. We are not using Grasshopper or anything else. And now we could look at other viewers where this could be used. So for example, Babylon, which is a 3D web engine. We could also bring our tree inside here. So if I just drag and drop, Babylon will um, load our model. So here we have it. Here we also have our tree in Babylon in um, another environment. So again, outside of Grasshopper, outside of Shape Diver, just completely independent. What about 3GS? So 3GS is another um, 3D web engine where we could do exactly the same. So if I take my tree, I can also drag and drop, and there you have it. Another web engine where now we can use our model, which it just came out of Grasshopper. So this is one tree, and then we could continue working with Grasshopper and create another variation. So we can use the power of parametric design to fit a complete scene. So for example, here, let's change this for um, 50 by 50, for example. Let's have a look up at, at our tree. Uh, let's change from 200 to 100. And let's go for trunk height 0.5. So we create a complete different variation in a couple of changes, a few changes. We can save this again, right click, save GLTF, and we could go test three, two. We save it. I can come back to 3GS and I can drag and drop again. And there you have it. Now I have another tree just that just came out of um, Grasshopper and now I can use in any other environment. Now imagine if you, have, if you were using Blender or any other uh, software. Now you can use Grasshopper and parametric design to fit all of your other software. Of course, this is now requiring a lot of um, manual work because I have to come back again to Grasshopper, I have to make changes to the parameters, export, save GLTF, import, etc. But all of this could be done through Shape Diver in an automatic way. So here we have Shape Diver, the same model in Shape Diver. And Shape Diver is actually using also 3GS. So here we have 3GS outside of Shape Diver, and here we have 3GS inside of Shape Diver. So all our framework is 3GS. So here I could also 
uh, set all of my um, settings. So for example, here I could say, I want my trunk height to be a bit lower. This gets sent to Grasshopper and then we will get back the result. And then we could export this to a GLTF format and then import it in any other software. Now, right now, this is a feature that is just available via the API. But what is good about it is that if you can do this via the API, that means that you could automate the process of changing parameters and basically populate an entire world with GLTFs that come from Grasshopper. So for example, I saw this um, post a long time ago in, in um, LinkedIn, where this, this person created a um, Grasshopper uh, model that is able to create these bushes parametrically. And then he was saying that now he could use Grasshopper to feed the metaverse, for example. So you can see that there is a huge potential to use um, these GLTFs um, any, anywhere, in any other software, in the metaverse, etc. Now, the GLTFs are also able to store other kind of data. So right now that we just saw that the GLTF in a single file, it stored the geometry itself, so the mesh, it stored a material, but the GLTFs are also able to store transformations, are also able to store um, material names, are also able to store object names, etc. But all of that, we will leave it for the next video tutorial where we will talk about GLTFs. And that's all for today. I hope you saw the huge potential that the creation of GLTFs have and how you can now use Grasshopper to do so. If you don't want to miss our next video about GLTF, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to know more about what other users are doing with ShapeDiver, then visit us at shapediver.com. And I will see you in the next one.